Hey everybody, this is Blue. Well, I have been working on a lot of projects in this head of mine and I am getting kind of backed up and not getting a lot completed because uh, I'm working a lot of hours in that and it's the holiday season. Yay! And so I thought I could do a quick video, kind of discuss what I've been working on and maybe you could have some insight and some advice for me and that would be awesome. So the first one is we're not just one element. Okay. With the zodiac they have us we you know we're one of four elements. We could be an air sign, water sign, fire, or earth, you know. Um, I'm Gemini so I'm an air sign. Woohoo but anyway um, on my one of my other Facebook groups, Witch and Bitchin um, one of my members has made comment about how he is not a Sagittarius, that he is this 13th Zodiac. And he was sort of wondering why. And my opinion is, just like I stated, it was so much easier to take the Zodiac and divide it into smaller numbers if you have only 12 compared to 13, because 13 is a prime number. And so they were able to divide the zodiac into from 12 into the four elements. Okay. And that's why I believe we only have 12 instead of the 13th, because the 13th really hasn't been, um, how do I say, it? banned. It's just ignored because it doesn't fit in nicely. But. I believe that we are not supposed to be just one element. I don't believe we should even have a primary element. I believe that we should be all four elements. And yes, I know in many forms of paganism they say there's a fifth. I'll get into that. All right, so what are the four elements? Of course, air, water, fire, and earth. And I think that we need to be able to work with all the elements, not just specify on one. Because we have some people that are getting blocked because they are ignoring an element because they doesn't they think it doesn't fit them. Okay. Um, my better half has issues with air and wind. And so I've been trying to work with that on her because she thinks it blocks her, and I believe it does. So it is my opinion that we need to work on the four elements. And until we get to work on the four elements, we can't work on the fifth. There is a couple of schools of thought that believe that um, the four elements are represented in the solar sign, you know, the Celtic cross, um, where it's each branch is an element and they are united together to form spirit. And off of that premise, you have to have all four elements working with you before you can even get to, ele to the element of spirit and work on magic a little bit more effectively. That's my opinion. I would like to hear your opinion on that. Um, the next one is, I had a dream a couple weeks ago um, about creating gates and working with portals. And this is something that kind of stuck in my head because we have a lot of people that say they could do some astral travel and they can open up a portal on the astral plane and travel. Okay. But then on some realms, and of course we're talking also about the Christian belief system, the gates of hell. Gates. What is the difference between a gate and a portal? Is what I'm trying to figure out. Now, the one thing that I have been able to find research on is that a gate is a fixed place. There is only certain places where gates can be opened up. 
and there are so it takes more to open it up whereas a portal is portable and most people with just a little effort can open up a portal to the astral plane but to some of the other realms it's a gate that's required and so I'm just wanting to have more information to back that up maybe you know something that I don't um, okay, next thing is I got my printer. I spent the extra money and I bought myself a business printer for my computer, which means that I can now make my own um, Oracle deck. I'm also going to be making symbol cards. The symbol card is just the way it sounds like. I am going to put certain symbols that are important into magic onto cards, which makes them highly more portable and so forth. Because, you know, you can't always just have fire on the altar, but if you have a symbol card with something like fire printed on it and with a rune or such, then you can take them and put them anywhere. And so I am very happy. I am right now going to order my cards so that I can do this work. Um, which then segues into another topic and that is I can make spell cards. Now. A spell card is simply a incantation printed on a card with a sigil on the back and thus I can make print up spell cards and I could probably sell them, kind of questioning that, but it makes things stored so that if I have a situation, I can grab the appropriate spell card and I can already have it charged and use it when needed. So that then segues into does size matter? Um, I found a company where I can buy blank tarot sized cards out. Um, one side has finished back but the one side is also blank so that I can run it through my printer which is why I bought this specific printer so that I can print off images onto tarot cards and create my own tarot deck or oracle deck or in this case symbol cards because I can then take these and I can print off like the fire sigil, I mean fire image, water, air, whatever I want to put on it. And then I can use them and place them throughout my house and my garage and all that. And they could also be used thus as a form of protection. Because you can put anything on it, it's a blank slate. Um, now comes the, the hard part here is uh, the company that I can buy these off of, U.S. Game Systems, they have the tarot size cards where you can get 80 of them for, I think it was $10. And, you know, that's 80 blank cards, so I can make a full-fledged, my own design tarot deck if I wanted to. Or, but like I said, I got so many other things I want to create using these cards. They also have regular playing cards. That which are size, you know, size of regular playing cards, but both, both sides are blank. And I'm wanting to use those for my spell cards because the plan is I can put those to the printer. One side I can put a finished sigil on it, and then on the other side I could put the incantation on it. So that if somebody was needing a spell, protection spell, whatever, they could have the card with the sigil on it, read the incantation two or three times, then place it on their altar. And, I mean, I think that would be a great idea. But would you use something that used a small little playing card, or do you think you should use the tarot size card for something like that? What's your opinion on that? <laughs> I know, I'm rambling on, but this has been bothering me for a while. Oh, 
Oh, yes. Um, in one of my previous videos, I talked about buying things from Science and Surplus. American Science and Surplus, sorry. Well, I bought tools. I bought a lot of tools. I bought the filing set, um, the Madame Trudeau wax set, and all, so that I can embed candles and make um, more minions um, for my altar and for other purposes. I, mean, I bought the clay so that I can form the outside, the basics of a humanoid figure, but then with the wax set I can carve it and put little details into it so that I can make my minions look better. Um, this is also put time and energy into them, which would help make them be stronger. Agar boys. Okay. Um, let's see. I've been working on my tarot staff. Um, they're in Roll Master, the game that I've been doing a lot of referencing on because I believe that there are things that can be taken from that. There's a profession called the Tarot Mage, where the person uses a staff for magical purposes. Well, I have been building a tarot staff, and I got to spend more time with it, but I've been wondering on painting it the color. I have three options, and they are, I could do an off black, more like a charcoal, blue, and green, because green promotes growth. And so, you know, I only get one shot at painting this, so I got to make the right choice. Um, which do you think I should use? What color? I mean, even if it's one that I haven't mentioned, because there's also been the thought in my head of white because white is a blank slate and thus then I when I put my runes on it it you know I'm then you know painting the slate which is why I bought those filing file I forget what they're called the files for woodwork so that I can take them and put in some sigils into the staff itself um, I've been talking about, you know, not being called a witch because, you know, I think a lot of the witch talk, witches have kind of diluted the meaning of witch. The word kind of, to me, has lost some of the power because we have so many people that are just doing it for shock value. And it's part of the role-playing conversation I'm having in my head because I want to define some um, various types of magics because there is so much out there. Um, one thing I've been thinking about is we have a lot of people that also say that they're green witch, kitchen witch, head witch, and all that. We do so many different forms of magic. I don't think we could, we could really label us as a whatever witch because there are times where we're going to do the love spells, protection spells, binding spells, and banishing spells. We're going to be enchanting candles, tools. We are going to be making uh, minions. We're going to be doing a lot of different work so one label doesn't fit us. So that's why I've been kind of thinking of being a mage because the word witch has been so diluted. Um, the next one, I saw an interesting video talking about the history of necromancy on YouTube and that really, really made me do a lot of thinking. Um, because it was simply talked about is necromancy evil and after watching the video and doing some research it's not evil anybody that says they're a necromancer 
really isn't a bad person, and I know this goes to because the Necronomicon and all that has heavily, um, and J.R. Tolkien, of course, has heavily influenced the term necromancy and necromancer. And so a necromancer is somebody that talks to the dead. It's kind of like a shaman with some really specialty skills to it. That's how I view it. A necromancer does not raise the dead. In the etymology of the word zombie, okay, which is a raised dead, it is from West Africa. It was brought over, unfortunately, with the slaves to Haiti and all that, and it is a part of the voodoo concept. We, more of the Europeans use undead terminology-wise, but still, zombies become the predominant term here. Necromancers did not do this. Your maleficent, your voodoo priest, your witch doctor did that. So I think there needs to be a wee bit more separation and a little bit more removing the stereotypes to from the necromancer, necromancy, because it isn't that bad. It is not evil. It is something that we try to do, like for dumb suppers around Sawi, okay? We welcome in the dead that passed away during that year and to give them peace. Maybe get a little bit of insight or answers from them. Well, technically that's necromancy. Okay? It's not evil. And so, that's just some things I've been thinking about. I would really love to hear your opinions, some advice, and all that. So everybody, please... Take care. Be at peace.